undermine the government. She says her complaints were met COVID with silence, but everyone heard them today. After careful and deliberate consideration, I must withdraw from the government benches to take my seat among the ranks of my conservative colleagues. On the first day of the fall sitting, Leona Alislev changed where she was sitting, crossing the floor to thunderous applause. I wish her uh, well in her decision. I'm looking forward to getting back in the House to talk about uh, uh, what we're going to be doing for Canadians, what we've been... The Prime Minister didn't say much, but Alice Lev says the Prime Minister is the problem, arguing he has failed in all the key areas. Tax reform, comprehensive foreign policy, defence and security. But there were no signs of those concerns in any of her social media posts, which often celebrated Trudeau, raising questions as to whether this was really about math. In 2015, Alice Lev won her seat over her conservative opponent by just over a thousand votes. But in this year's Ontario election, those same voters made a hard right turn and voted overwhelmingly to elect a progressive conservative. It's truly not about that. It's about being able to look my constituents and look myself in the mirror. Whatever the motivation, it gives Andrew Shear a bilingual female MP from a suburban Toronto riding he badly needs in order to win the next election. It also gives him a sales pitch. For all those Canadians who supported Justin Trudeau in 2015 and are dissatisfied or even angry about the leadership that he's been giving, the Conservative Party needs you. It's not clear if they can get more, but today the Conservatives got one they could gloat about. Oral questions. And made sure her new seat was in a prime spot on camera every time Shear spoke. David Cochran, CBC News, Ottawa. Now, the Conservatives probably needed a win, and they certainly needed to reclaim the spotlight. That's why the timing of today's announcement was hardly a coincidence. For weeks, Sheer has been overshadowed by the man who quit the Conservatives and declared the party morally corrupt. Today was Maxime Bernier's first chance to sit in his new seat with his new party name. Instead, Bernier was put firmly on the back bench and the back burner. The Prime Minister's summer of failure wasn't just about pipelines. It also included his lack of a plan to deal with the illegal border crosser crisis. Today was all about the official opposition and what they are arguing are the mistakes of the government. It is part of the story that Conservatives want to tell all this year leading up to the next election. The Prime Minister says it's not a sign of a bigger problem. It's a very sort of, okay, one team lost a member and it went to the other side. It can be an indicator of larger things. It can be just what it is. Uh, and we'll just stay focused on, on the things that we're focused on doing. But the Conservatives are hoping that for Canadians, and even, yes, for this one former Liberal, there is now another party to consider. And for today, that was win enough for them.